So again, this is just a recap of whatever we've done. So up your child's sentences, work questions, making it relevant. Um, the way that you can really make your question, questioning relevant, for example, I'm just giving you an example. Their visual schedule that they will have, you can use, you can use this to ask who questions, you can use this to ask where questions. You can also use it to ask why, if they're, you know. And when you're asking them, um, so for example, they, are, they will be used to their routine. They'll be used to seeing these pictures after a while. And they'll be used to hearing these words. <coughs> so you can ask them, where are we going next? Are we going to school or are we going home? So they will be able to say home. So you can use your schedule that you have. Think about how, um, what, what you're doing in your life, what your, what your activities are, take a note of your activities and see how you can make that visual enough for your child to use that as a, as a language game for them or to use that as a conversation um, starter with them. So for example, the school board, the mall board, the grocery shopping, um, I've done sand play boards, water play boards. What is your child motivated by? Now I know um, you're probably thinking you don't know how to make the boards because they look quite complex, and I have the software to make it. But you, as parents, obviously, you don't have the time, and you may not have the resources, obviously. Um, you can make simple boards at home. You don't have to make such complex ones like I've done. Uh, other than that, if, you're, if you all want to pull in and someone purchase it, uh, I would strongly recommend it. Because if you have a child who's on the autistic spectrum, don't underestimate the power of the visual. So it's, it's going to be a real worth worth it to invest in it. Um, okay, I'm going to be sending this to you um, through email. I've done a list of resources and games that I use in my sessions, um, which you can have at home and you can maybe purchase immediately. I'll be sending it. <coughs> I'll send it on your email. Um, so it has the resource, the purpose, and how to use it. Um, <coughs> So, yeah, I've got all the, so we first started off with sensory, then we've got like different resources, puzzles and animals and uh, you know, things that you can purchase immediately and use immediately with your child, okay? Because a lot of the times you're, you might be lost, you know, might struggle, where do I start? So, okay, that's it. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, please. Let me know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have quite a few items in my box. I would recommend starting with just three items, and each item, play with it for one minute. So you've got three minutes of attention. And keep increasing, like every week you can put one more item in until maybe you've got uh, five items and your, your child is able to sit and engage for five minutes. So that's a smart goal, yeah? No. Oh, okay, okay. So our question was, uh, how long should we play with the attention bucket for, the attention box? Um, and what if the child wants to uh, engage with the toy? The answer is, you can start with three items. Um, one minute each, play with the toy for one minute, and then build it, build it up from there. If the child wants to grab the toy, that's actually a good sign because that means that they're interested in the toy. But by you, um, so you won't stop them. So if you are the one engaging with the toy, the second adult will have to come in, um, put them back. If there's no second adult, all you will do is non-verbally, you'll just place their hands back on their lap and guide them to their seat. Don't tell them, sit down, listen, I want you to, your language has to be very simple, very clear, be calm, don't, um, don't uh, make the child more anxious than what they already are. So <clears throat> no, for this game, the child is not. You can then, like you saw in the video um, with the top, Kabir using the top, that, then I started using it as a two-way turn-taking game because he was, he's able to now communicate with me. His attention is pretty good. Um, so once you've developed that, you can then use it as <coughs> an attention game. As long as you have your visual board or some communication pictures to use it.
instead of the board, you would pick up the thing or whatever I give her. What did she like whatever I give her, like any set she got from the box or any pencils or any whatever I give her. Okay, so she's she should not have that in you she should only have the board in front of her. You should be in charge of the toys. So she doesn't have the opportunity to take those toys and stim. So when she says I want yes. then I have to give You have to give her if she wants to stim, let her stim and if she she is stimming, obviously that means there's some sensory need over there, so you'll have to take her to an occupational therapist and see what the issue is. But yeah, when she's communicating, or when it's a turn taking game, like you notice, I had the control of the toys. I didn't just give it to the child, it wasn't laid out there for them to grab. So they had, you have to provide the opportunities for them to communicate with you. So when you say, I want this, let me give it to yes. them, but then yes. she starts. That's okay. Let her do whatever she wants with the toy. Um, you can maybe gently guide her. You can have a, a toy in your hand, but I think with you model the play, model the play with her. If you have a second toy, you can squeeze the ball or stretch the slinky and see if she will imitate that. Um, but I think you need to get to the root of the issue, which is there must be some oral sensory issues going on, which maybe throughout the day she's going to need some stimulation. <laughs> Maybe you need to do some exercises outside language, so outside his communication. So getting him to exercise the lips maybe. So holding on to items, blowing bubbles, um, doing massages with him in the morning um, and frequently through the day. So frequently stimulate his mouth um, and get him to maybe hold items. So like hold a popsicle stick between his lips and maybe try to do some resistance activities as well. So while he's holding the, active, uh, holding the item, maybe try to tug on it, so pull it slightly so he's building up his strength for it. Um, and then you can uh, start to use speech uh, sounds. Um, so you can have the speech, um, the, the sounds that use the lips are mm, p, b. So these are the sounds he struggles with? Are these the ones? R. Pa is okay. Okay, so. Okay, that's probably why. You need, uh, I'll, you need to come to an, for an assessment and things. I, giving you advice is hard. Giving you advice, like this is difficult. I need to see the child okay. and to see the muscle tone and. Uh, If you, if, so if your child is verbal, can you use sign language? Is that your question? No. Uh, how verbal is your child? Like, are they speaking? Yeah, sign language will definitely help them. 
um, retain more vocabulary. And uh, the, the thing is, um, try to look for some of the sign language courses, even online, on YouTube. Um, there's something called Makaton Signing, you would know. Um, Makaton Signing or Sign Along. So if you just type these in, you would get maybe some vocabulary that would help you in your day to day. So sign language, um, this is not sign language which you would use for a child who has hearing difficulties or who's deaf and dumb. This is l language, sign language that's being used with even a typically developing child or um, a child who has a language delay because what you're doing is you're signing and you're saying the keyword as well. So for example, if it's a sentence like get your bag, you're not saying, you're not just doing this. You're using the word along with the sign. So the child is grasping both at the same time. So get your bag and sit down. OK? So um, that'll help their sentence structures. It'll help their memory. And it'll, yeah, it'll definitely help her express it. Sorry? No, not at all. Not at all. It won't prevent anything. In fact, it, it supports language development. She repeats, if I speak in, ask in Hindi, she does it. But if I ask in English, she repeats the question, then she does it. Oh, she's more uh, comfortable in English? No, Hindi. But if I ask something in English, then she repeats the question, then she gives reply. In Hindi or English? Hindi. In Hindi, she does it. So you ask the question in English or you ask it in Hindi? So both things are used. We speak in Hindi. Okay, so what she's doing is when she repeats the, she replies as well. She gives the answer. Yes, so that's fine. Right. Like, what is your name? Then she says, what is your name? Then she gives a reply. Oh, okay, yes, so she's learned it as a rote. Um, okay, so she sometimes that could be a sign that they're processing the question. So them repeating means that they're trying to understand what you're asking of them. Sometimes it could be a learned behavior, which this sounds like it's a learned behavior where she um, repeats the question. So again, that could be resolved maybe by using visuals. So you'll have the visual of the question, what is your name? And then you'll have the choices of the answers down below. So when you're asking her the question, what is your name? You're immediately directing her to the answers rather than her um, looking at the, or listening to the question or repeating the question. Do you understand? So you'll have the, you'll have the visual, description what is your name with maybe some sim symbols that you can use and then choices of answers so your daughter's name and maybe mama and you give her a choice when you give her the visual choice her mind is automatically uh, going to um, be focused on choosing rather than repeating the question so in time if you keep repeating that then you can take the choice away the second choice and you can just have her name underneath so she'll understand what is your name is the question and that's the answer so I don't have to repeat that the answer is right there and then you can take the visual away eventually <laughs> no, um, it depends on how the ABA is conducted um, I, I, I've seen a lot of children who go to ABA who have uh, really terrible behavior sometimes um, because a lot of the time they are forced to do things. Um, the parents are not sitting in on the sessions, so you don't really know what's going on in the ABA class. Um, and they're just generally very frustrated. So I don't know in Hyderabad how good the ABA is. On the other hand, there have been parents who have you know, really benefited from it. Um, From a, from uh, I've read up on uh, children who have had autism and who've now grown up, and they have given their verdict on ABA, and they said it's horrible. Don't ever put your child through it. So from <laughs> they've grown up now and they're verbal and they're able to you know type it on a computer or say or, you know um, tell you what they f they felt and they're like you know when we're, we're not robots. Children who have autism are not robots. So why are you asking them in the middle of a game? Touch your head touch your shoulders, eat this. Okay, so they, from their point of view, I don't think they enjoy it very much. When you make your language more natural and you see them as a child that is struggling to communicate and they need some support, um, that's where you get real-time engagement.
because of his leave's request, now he wants to talk to many people but doesn't get the words. He ends up repeating a little bit of whatever he knows. So for the communication, well, what can I think of? I don't know what has happened, what he wants to say. How do I help him? I mean, communication boards or who? Mm -hmm. Can you see? What does he think? I have no idea. He come and look at me. He wants to talk, but the words don't come out. Then he will end up saying the same thing. The light was turned on, we went to hotel, we went to restaurant or something. But there's so much more he wants to talk. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know how to help. One more time. So what you could do is um, go through your routine again, see where the places that you go to, or, or, or what are the things that he, the places that he likes to go to. Pick those, pick two or three topics, and then think of the vocabulary that he might be saying. Do you do you have any inkling of what he might want to say? So usually, okay. Okay. But you you should be going to those places. About it. Don't just randomly take the boat out and start talking about the ocean. I'm trying to say make your visuals as relevant to what you're doing. It has to be a tactile experience for them to talk about it in the first place. So if it's something within your routine, like if he likes the park or if he likes sand play or water play, that's something that a board that you can develop. And think of the vocabulary around that activity um, and try to try to see if he can use the board to expand his sentences. So, yeah. Sorry? What's the use of it? it has so it has about uh, 30,000 vocabulary on it, on the software. So any visual that you want to make, any social story you want to make, any sequencing, so all the visuals that you saw on the screen are done through communicating in print software. So. You just what you all you have to do is type the word in, and the visual comes up immediately. So it saves you so much time going through the internet, searching through the visuals. You know, that's as parents you don't have time to do that. Um, but if you have this, did that answer your question? General activity. The way of acting toward the child is in real life. The computer generated features, will they be able to correlate that? It depends on where you're. So, usually in the beginning, if your child is really um, uh, quite low functioning at the moment and not engaging, very low attention, I would, tr I would use real pictures. Okay, I would put real pictures on the board. Thereafter, I quickly move them onto symbols because symbols are universal and symbols can be used in many different things. things. Don't also try to think of um, in the future functionally. Uh, you want your child to communicate with as many communicative partners as possible in their school, in their in, in their park, in their friends, or whatever. So um, symbols would be better to move on. But if your child is very low functioning, start with real pictures, their own objects. Take pictures of their items, their own items. Pictures. And making a social <coughs> story, we use means whatever you show. Yes. The social story we are using generalized pictures, maybe symbols or other. Okay. What I want to say is, while sequencing also, can we try with just general pictures so that no, the, the sequencing one that I had was general pictures. The competition board, the board that you are showing us. The sequencing yeah. board, yeah, yeah. That was a symbol. No, the, not the online one. Uh, you know, you can use symbols as well. Again, this was uh, this is good for a child who's just starting maybe speech therapy or just starting to get introduced to visuals. This is pretty good. Um, uh, they're real life activities because then that really um, helps them understand and engage better. But yes, after thereafter, you can move to symbols. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First is real, then to, then to, yeah. What kind of uh, stimulating behaviors? Anything, hand clapping.
the toy or anything like yeah. that when they get super excited, jumping on the spot or something like that. Yeah. I Those kind that. of self-stimulatory behaviors, do they go down once they become very verbal? Have you seen that happen? Yes. Yeah, I, I have seen it because sometimes um, they stim, um, obviously when they're very excited and they don't know how to express that they're happy or express that they're upset about something. When they start to understand the environment a little more and they start to, uh, they, they're able to express clearly either through the picture, pointing, or they come to you, they understand what communication is about. Yes, that for that stimming reduces. I have seen it, yeah. Because I see uh, kids that have given high confidence, they use language as well as studies Okay. Another thing is, if the stimming is not harming child and it's not harming anybody else, um, let them stim. It's okay. It's fine. It's it's their way of calming their sensory system down. Uh, it's it's just their way of expressing themselves as well. If it's not hindering anything, then allow them to stim. Sometimes they need it. They need to stim. Yeah. Producing the speech sound, he had a problem during birth. Okay. So his understanding is at par, and he'll understand everything, his attention is fine, but uh, whatever he tries to speak comes out as a, b, b, m. That's all sound, that's all he has at, uh, at this level. So, what can we do to you know help him? So, he has only sounds at this level, no words. So I don't want him to, you know, get down with his confidence level and everything. So mm -hmm. what can we do to help that? So there again, you wouldn't really start with speech sounds. You wouldn't start um, developing the child's uh, speech sound system. You would start again with a, with playway, with attention method, the attention bucket, and the visuals. Because the, because he, just because he's saying uh, buh, buh, and not able to uh, say the sound correctly, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have things to communicate with you. Is he is he diagnosed with autism or he's oh, okay. and how old is he? So he is going to need some AAC, which is alternative augmentative communication board. So he's going to need some visuals to help him express, put the words together, and in time that will also help his verbal expression. So at this point, don't worry about his speech sound system. Um, because I feel at five and a half, he's probably got a lot to express. But he's not been given the opportunity maybe through boards and visuals and things like that. Has he? Have you ever done things like that with him? Visuals? Yeah, so he's probably got things to communicate with you. Don't worry about the speech sound clarity or um, the, the boards will help him understand. The boards will help him uh, commu uh, express through pointing. Later on, he might start to try to say the word and point. And then once he tries to start, uh, once he's got more comfortable and he's got more vocabulary, and he, he starts to say the word and attempt, then you can start with speech sounds. See, oral motor does not directly affect a child's uh, speech sound. It will help them get used uh, introduced to the different articulators that they have. So you can do looking at the tongue, you know, looking at the teeth, and the way the, the articulators are placed, that will, it'll help with that, but you will need to specifically work directly on those sounds to help him produce that sound correctly. Just oral motor won't, won't help. But I will, again, I would say you can do oral motor now because that's fun for him. Again, I would say leave the speech sounds for maybe a little later. First, work on his communication. Uh, my son is at a sentence level, but the problem is when he's speaking, he speaks. He doesn't stress on each word. He's speaking it so fast that at least I can understand a bit. But a stranger won't be able to understand that. 
But then I'm, I'm, I'm asking him to stress on each word. He's stressing too much. Like, ma'am, a, me, you know? So, again, okay. okay, a negative point here also there on the How can I work with it? Um, you could do some um, other activities outside language again to work on things like fast and slow, the concept of fast and slow. Okay, so you could play games where you're running fast or you're running slow. You can play, then you can move it on to language. So you're talk. So get him more aware, bring his awareness um, alive and get him more tuned into what his language sounds like. You can also record him and you can record him and let him hear it to see what it sounds like when he's talking really fast. And then maybe when he does say a sentence nicely and slowly, record that and say, this is good. See, you're talking really well. So you're, again, you're praising him specifically for something that he's done. Um, um, also, if you're, if you're doing like a structured activity with him, again, if you use visuals with him, that will also help him structure the sentence and slow his rate down. Because he has to point, he has to point and say. So that might also help him slow the rate down. You could do that, but to make him to make him more independent, a board would be more useful because then it, the responsibility is on him to point and say the word. So as he points, he needs to say the word. So it, it, more more responsibility on him. Is it because he's too fast or yeah? they use in school, um, what, is, what topics are they doing, what is the language that they would be. I mean, is it, is it you, that the teacher can't understand um, his requests? Is that what she can't understand? Like yeah, his OK, things like that. So yeah. basic things. So for that, again, you could, does he have a particular place where he sits in class? Okay, every child that has a language day, make sure you're telling the teachers, my child has to sit in the front. If your child has, don't, and their place should not be moved. Okay, because again, like I said, they love routine. They like to be in one place. It makes them very anxious if you're going to keep moving them around every day. And if they're sitting at the back, they're not going to be, their attention listening is very poor anyway. So make sure that all of you have got that checked with the teacher, that your child is always sitting in front in the same place. Now, if they're sitting in the same place, you can use that as an opportunity to use that little space for him to provide visuals. So you can stick the visuals onto his table. And they should be, they should allow this because this is going to help him. So if it's things like water, his basic needs like water, toilet, um, snack, I'm tired, put that as, put that as visuals um, next on his desk. So if he's struggling to say something, the teacher can come to him and get, uh, get clarification through the visuals. He's very soft at the back. He's able. But he's able so softly in that, you know, that crowd. That noise. Yeah, she'd have to come close to him. And get down to his eye level. So you will not actually need to train the teacher a little bit on good communication tips. So come close to him, get down to his eye level, ask him what do you want, let him point to the visual. Because, and then you'll notice that once he's, once he knows that the communicative partner can understand me, his confidence levels will increase. And you won't have to even work on his loudness. His loudness will automatically increase if his confidence increases. If it doesn't, then you can work on the concept like loud and soft recordings, um, getting him you know, tuned in to what loud means, what soft means. Um, but usually when the child 
knows, okay, my world has opened up a little more and people are understanding me a little bit more, then their confidence levels naturally build up. Um, when do they do it? When they're alone. Uh, is, he, is it a lot of self-talk? See, self-talk when he's on his own is fine. How old is he? Huh? Oh, okay. So self-talk on his own is okay. But self-talk in a group, maybe not so. And um, you can use a social story for that. So you can tell him sometimes when you do not understand or you know when you're not able to listen, sometimes you start talking. We will try to do this, this, and this. We will try not to do talking or turning away. So you use a social story for that and see if it will help him. So may what can he do? Yeah, he can you know um, quiet or or say I don't understand. Can is he verbal? He's verbal, right? So he t give him the things that he should say, or s uh, yeah. So say I need help, I don't understand, or be quiet. So self talk in a group is something you can work on a social story with him. support with your child don't start with an iPad or any technic uh, technology with them um, like I like the the one of the slides said that um, you have to engage your child so just keep just putting the app in front of them and letting them press randomly is not going to help their communication now avas can be used with a nonverbal child as well but as long as you've started with physical pictures first and they are comfortable in pointing to those pictures first before you move on to pointing because then you'll put the app in front of them and they'll keep swiping. They won't use it functionally. And the app must be um, uh, used where, the, where they are getting some, it, where you're communicating, you're engaging with them. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If they're able to point and yeah, you can use that. The level of if, if the child is verbal or not verbal, nothing like that. You can use if the child is verbal, you wouldn't necessarily use avas. Um, because avas, like, it's just the communication goes down. Right? If there's no sound, yeah, then they can just use it. But I found I find that, um, and in my experience, technology actually sometimes hinders the child's communication. They are so taken up with all the different pictures or just the you know that they touch something and something else happens they get lost in that and they use lose the point that they have to communicate with the person in front of them so you can customize it and maybe use it sparingly with them you can customize it yeah how do you reduce the <coughs> from dependency uh, what kind of prompting are you giving them uh, she just wait for some evidence of this look for some like shoes are there. So you bring shoes, she wants your finger you, you to point towards it. So that means that she may not be processing your verbal language. She's probably just processing your point. So that means you have to go back and work on her understanding a little more. Um, maybe start using giving instructions to items that are close by to her so without you having to point you can also start by using visuals so you can point to the visual and see if she can recognize and then follow through with the instructions so if it's get your shoes um, you can have a visual of the items that she would need to get ready like her uniform her shoes her socks and just point to them so instead of you pointing to the object, you're putting more responsibility on her to process what you're saying. At this stage, if you're just if you're pointing, 
it sounds like she's, it's not prompt dependent, she's not understanding your language. So use your visuals too. Um. It depends on what level your child is at. Like if they are very, if they're not communicating at all and their attention is very low, then I would just start with the attention box for a month or a month and a half. Just do the attention box, just do the OWL method, free play with the child. And then slowly introduce the communication board. But when you're introducing the communication board, you will be using it rather than getting them to express. You know, if you want to see, like you will point and demonstrate, you will model language to them. So. Schedule for almost like maybe just two months, and then we move to the written schedule. So our day starts with like uh, we'll just write. We both will just write down what we are going to do. Like I'll go to school, um, then the gym class, everything. We'll go to the timetable, go through the timetable, and at the end of the day, uh, we write a diary. Like he has a diary where he will, I went to school. He like writes it. Yeah, oh. I went to. School. I mean, so shall I again go back because. Uh, He's verbal, uh, though initiation is spontaneous, communication is missing in the child. Like, uh, it's more of like asking, let's play. Uh, so shall I just go It sounds like he's doing this um, written thing as a, as a routine, as a chore. Like he comes back and he does the, does he do it on his own or you ask him to do it? He likes yeah, writing. Yeah, he likes okay. writing and it won't be like uh, too dramatically correct. Okay. Like we and then what I do, I it's like a scrapbook and then I paste pictures. So he likes revisiting it. Okay. So yes. shall I uh, like shall I introduce this want? Like there are some signs for want or I do not like like in a happy face happy. So shall I just go back again because uh, the child is still at the man and the intro, like you know kind of intraverbal level. Um, so, for example, for this, can you get some information from school about what he enjoyed doing? You shadow him? Oh, okay. No initiation with uh, play with this, uh, his classmates and also no spontaneous communication with him. Or the spontaneous uh, spontaneous communication is like mom apple, ama uh, juice. Like it's just like he'll just point his needs. Yeah, the needs and like you know all of a sudden a green ball. So like so like should I just go back? How many? Seven. Seven. Um, if your shadow, could you maybe introduce? Um, could you maybe take a few children aside and do like some? With him and the other children, like taking them. Do they? Does he know their names? He knows all their names. Now he knows their names. So if if you are allowed to, maybe you could take um, videos if you are allowed to take videos or pictures, and then talk about that with him at home. Um, and then maybe you could give him like a task every week. So you could have one child helping him with his lunchbox or like sitting with him. So have like a buddy system. Um, and you could have a goal. So the goal is for your buddy and you to eat lunch together for this week. So try to involve, if the children are willing, try to involve them um, and have one goal per week. Or the next week can be for you to ask your friend for a toy um, or to ask to, to play with him on the slide, to do turn taking on the slide. You'd have to pick your children because you'd have to pick a very social, sweet child who's willing to do this. So it sounds like he just needs a little bit more encouragement and direct structure to um, play with other children, initiate in his class. So give it, a, and you can, if he can write and he can read, have that goal written out for him. This is your goal for the week. So you're putting that responsibility on him. Maybe one last question and then we'll... You. <laughs> <laughs>
repeats everything. Whenever he wants anything, that time if I ask him to say few words, he will repeat those things. But other than that, he will not speak anything. He will just yap and repeat. Self talk. How um, to encourage him to speak on me, basis or something, whatever he wants. He wants you to, uh, so he's not really telling you his needs at the moment even? No. So like hungry, toilet, and water, not, not at that level even. Okay, so, <clears throat> and your child is four and a half, you said? Four years. Four years. So again, how would you encourage him through visuals? Like my, the whole basis of this presentation, I've just been reinforcing visual, 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 engage, engage, engage. So, <clears throat> You would, you could, you could get an idea of what his needs are, what he would usually ask for, and have like a board up in your house with the visuals on them. So maybe you can start with just two visuals at a time, so he can ha make a choice. If he's not at that level, take just use one visual and um, get him to maybe point to it. Um, see, picture exchange, um, pe peck system. I feel there's not much carryover usually because. It's very difficult for the child to take the picture off, and they don't do that because some of them have motor difficulties. Sometimes, if they can just tap or point at it, um, then they're able to. They're able to. Um, uh, they're able to kind of um, tell you their needs faster. It's a much faster process of communication. So, uh, think of his needs and make them visual and. You could introduce that. Um, you could you could have it as a small board at his eye level, uh, and introduce one picture at a time. So keep increasing the board. Start with one, then start with you know give him a choice of two. Do you like? Do you want to go to the toilet or you want to eat? Um, is he verbal? So you'll have to take him like to to the board. You'll have to take him to the board uh, often. And then um, you you'll have to detect when he wants something. So if you feel that he wants to eat, take him to the board and then tell him, um, do you want to go to the toilet? Or are you hungry? Are you hungry? So then he'll know that, OK, this hungry means I get to eat. So uh, think of his daily schedule and the times that you would he would want to initiate that communication. And at that time, take him to the board and get him to communicate through the visual. Then, then you can take the visuals away later because he will start to automatically, spontaneously say it. Tell, tell you his name. Uh, okay, naturally, naturally, what what would the child say? I'm hungry. So think of, huh? He say no. What was your question? Yeah, when we are teaching, if he needs food, then he needs to ask in some way. So should I teach him that he needs to say that I want to eat means eat or hungry or two things together? No, no, two things together. Just one thing. And whatever, whatever would come naturally. Okay, to me, uh, I'm hungry would be more of a natural request rather than I want to eat because usually a child of four would say hungry. So you could, whatever comes naturally, if you feel that eat, eating, that verbal stimuli is more uh, uh, natural, use that. But don't use the two at the same time. You could say, um, you could use one when he's communicating with you. And then when he's eating, you could then join them together. Like, you are hungry, so now you're eating when he's eating. OK? I don't want to ask. My daughter is six years old. So she didn't take me to her uh, job or something. She's able to understand the languages. Only a few words to you. Papa, 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 recommendation because with CP there are all sorts of motor issues that come into play um, I have to see her level of communication and I can't give you advice like this okay La
No, it's not really a part of ABA um, because ABA to me, how they do it in India is a very, it's a very rote, um, they do things like matching and sorting and things like that. Whereas speech therapy would work on more of their functional communication at home and the parents are very much involved in the session. Whereas with ABA, I, I know that the parents sit out of the session to my knowledge, they're not involved. So no, it's not the same. But the only thing is in Hyderabad, you don't have speech therapists that are going to work appropriately with your child. So in Hyderabad, I would recommend not going because it, it can do more harm than good if you're going to a speech therapist that doesn't know which level to start at and wh where to take the therapy. So if, you, if you're going to ABA, go there for now. Just stick with that. No, so <laughs> finished. <laughs> Uh, you could go to <coughs> um, uh, the UK website, which is uh, NAS, the National Autistic Society, that has qu quite good advice. I don't know if any of you have seen that. Um, then you've got uh, the American one, which is ASHA. Um, I, I can't remember what it stands for, but that's also another one. And then you've got the basic ones like um, Hannon, it takes. Uh, Hanen program, H A N E N, Hanen program. Um, that's got the basics for com language and communication development. There's another, mm, wait, for autism. Um, I can give you, I can give you the list if you would like. When I email the therapy resources, I can give you a few websites that you can so check. Reference books. reference books, yeah, a lot. It takes two to talk. Motivate to communicate, which some of you have, uh, I don't know if I gave it to you. Motivate to communicate is a very good book, which will basically help you take your everyday things, like even a cup, or like I, I play a game with the children, which I have a long, um, you know, in the brooms, you get those tubes. So I use that as a tunnel for them to put the car in. Like use your every, whatever you have in your house to teach a concept. So that's a very good book, Motivate to Communicate. It has got over 100 ideas, um, teaching concepts like hot and cold or in and out, opposites. Motivate to communicate. I can't remember. I can put that in a, in a reference list as well. So, OK. <laughs> No, initially no, because if you're working on their attention and listening, it's better to just be one-to-one um, -one with them, um, with either with an adult um, or just you. I, there can be another adult in the room, but another child, they will be easily distracted. Now, when you're moving on to turn-taking, have another child in the room, then you can move on here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening. And, uh,